Good morning. And welcome to a very wet Winnipeg. It is pouring outside right now. I guess uh, two hours ago I got up, woke up early again, and uh, I checked the weather and it said a warning, severe thunderstorms. <laughs> Well, we're getting one right, right this minute. It's, it, I, it seems to be subsiding, so I guess it's passed over. But I, I highly doubt that Don and Bridget are going to be coming over the bridge. At least not right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's windy out there. Their umbrellas would take them off like uh, Mary Poppins in that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, now. What did I forget to do yesterday? I thought of it after, when I, after I'd uploaded everything. I thought, oh, I forgot about the super macro. I, I, even, I even put it over, over there so I'd see it every so often and it remi would remind me. But I, I guess I, I don't know, I, I didn't deliberately do that. It's, uh, we're, we're going to do that today. We'll, I'll, I'll do sort of maybe a little bit of an in-depth thing. And, uh because I'm, I've really got nothing model-wise to show you. But this, this is sort of model-related. We'll try and find a, a little place on, on here. Maybe, maybe that hydraulic cylinder that's on the back there. Yeah, maybe we can sort of zoom in on that. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how that goes. Or maybe I, I'll find a, a real small piece of photo etch. That might actually be better because that plastic is so, you know, because of the melding, there's no real definition anywhere on it, and uh, so I'll, I'll add a little piece of photo etch. And I'll just do a comparison between the two, the super macro and the mag regular macro. Oh, in case somebody is wondering, why is it that, the, that this one gets in five times closer than this one, and yet this one is, is way bigger? Well, this one's got a whole bunch of electronic stuff in it. It's uh, electronically to operate the the uh, the, the f-stop, the iris that opens up, and so on. Uh, then there's the 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 auto focusing is in there, so it's got a little motor that runs the changes all the all the lenses, and that has to be pretty heavy duty because there's a, a lot of glass in this thing. And then the the other thing is it's got uh, uh, built-in vibration control or vibration uh, for for shake anti-shake uh, okay that's all in this lens so that's why it's a lot bigger whereas this one has nothing electronic nothing at all it's completely manual just like an old-fashioned lens that you would have bought for your SLR way back in the 50s okay so what we will do is uh, we will do sort of a kind of in-depth thing and I'll show you how how I use this this lens. I think some of you will find it quite interesting. Those of you who are, you know, a little bit in, into the photography and so on. And and uh, I know that some of you are because you're putting out videos on your models. So, uh, yeah, you, you got to be into photography a little bit. <clears throat> now, uh, what else can I say here? Uh, right, right now, the the news is the weather. You can actually see the screen flashing there from the lightning and <laughs> the rain coming down. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's uh, get at it here and uh, recompose and get reset up. Maybe, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, I was going to, instead of telling you what I was, what I'm going to do, why don't I just show you what I'm going to do. Now I was able to get out on two wheels yesterday just before my coffee visitor showed up. And I went 17.3 kilometers and I was out for about, oh, 38 minutes. Just long enough and far enough to say I did get out. Okay, where do I start here? Well, first of all, I guess you probably notice about three hours has passed. And uh, my coffee is cold, but I'm used to drinking cold coffee. It's usually only hot or at least warm when I do the clunk thing. And then it slowly cools down and I sip at it all throughout the rest of the day. 
Okay, like I say, where do I start? All right, first of all, this is what I refer to as my old camera. It's a, a Nikon D850. I don't think they're making this anymore. I think you can still buy them new. Okay, I'm sitting here in front of my computer right now, and I thought I'll just check. So I brought up B&H Photo. And uh, yes, they're still selling those cameras brand new. So uh, I don't know if maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are still manufacturing them. I know uh, it wasn't all that long ago there was a, a shortage on them. It seems like everybody and their dog wanted one. Um... Well, maybe not the dogs. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's move on here. But I don't think they're actually manufacturing them. They're, they've switched over to the what they call their Z-mount series, or Z-mount. In other words, the camera that I, that's actually videoing right now is a, a Z9 or Z9. And uh, it's it's pretty good. I'm, I'm very happy with it. I doubt very much if I will if I will upgrade. Anyway, this is my old camera. It has what is known as an F mount lens. In other words, where where it mounts in the camera, it's a it's an F mount. And the F mount on Nikon came out in the summer of 1959, which is about the time when I was starting to take pictures. I've got some slides that I took way back then. Anyway, it's an F mount and and if I want to use my super macro it, it will actually fit in there. It's, uh, where's my little line here? I think that's it there. Okay. One, one thing that is, is unique about, about, oh, the lens cap keeps falling off on this thing. And I actually put a little piece of, little paper in there to make it kind of jam it, but it's time for a new paper. Anyway, Nikon is rather unique in that to, t to take the lens off, you screw it uh, right to the right instead of to the left. And it, when I first got the Nikon cameras, it, it took me quite a while to get used to that because it's opposite to, you know, any other camera that I've had before. Uh, SLR, that is. I had a Pentax, an old Pentax with a screw-on base. You know, it was threaded. <laughs> and then I had a, a Konica, and it, it also loosened by turning it to the left. Anyway, this one, it, you have to, to loosen it, you have to push push the release button here and then screw it to the right. Well, I'm used to it now because I've, I've been using it for quite a while. Anyway, we, we got a bit of a problem in that this is F mount and this is a Z mount. Just let me put this back on here so that no more dust gets in than absolutely necessary. Okay, so th this is this is actually a pretty good camera, but it will not do 8K video. It will not even do 4K at 60 frames a second. So, uh, but it will do 4K uh, at 30 frames a second. Anyway, let's get this out of the way here. Now, in order to be able to use the old F mount lenses on my my new Z mount camera. Uh, just let me show you here. You have to use an adapter. Another high-tech camera bag. <laughs> okay, this is my uh, my fisheye lens. <laughs> it takes in 180 degrees, which is kind of sweet at times. However, this is also an, an older F-mount lens. So I, I had to get what's known as a, an, a, an F to an F to Z adapter, which uh, let's see now. You push the, push this in. Where are we here? And push this in and we're going to turn it this way to loosen it. Okay, now we've got our adapter going on. And all it is is, is, is basically, it's like an extension tube. There's no glass in it at all. But there is uh, uh, actually some sort of electronic circuitry in this thing. And, uh, 
anyway, this is what we have to use if I want to use this this lens. So I got to stick this on here now. And uh, okay, I think it goes like this. Very carefully now. Don't force anything if it doesn't seem to line up. Okay, now we're good to go. Now this will fit on this camera. So I'm going to sort of recompose and we'll we'll put this on and we'll try and uh, you know what maybe what I should do first is find a piece of photo etch and and we'll just use the ordinary macro lens and then we'll put the super macro on um, okay uh, are you confused yet well I am Oh my, it's pouring out again. Okay. Okay, that's where the sounds sink. I just realized I, I've got my uh, front door open here. I better go check. Okay, whatever it was passed over, and I guess the wind was from the other direction, so we don't need to worry about that. All right, let's uh, open our lens up here a bit and uh, focus in. Okay, now you'll probably recognize these these things as uh, something that we chose not to use about several months ago. I was just having too much trouble putting them on. Uh, anyway, stop this down a little bit here. Increase the depth of field. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, recompose here. I just suddenly realized that my little measuring stick is is way over there and I can't reach it so I'm gonna do it this way. Uh, we'll, we'll take the very first one here that I'm I'm centering in on. Okay that should be the center right there. We'll take that well that's not the first one. There's the first one. Okay we'll take that one right there. They're they're all you know they're all waste anyway we're not going to be using those so um Okay, so we'll open the lens up all the way, and then we will, I will put my glasses on so I can see the screen over there nice and clear. And what I'm going to do is turn my macro here down to its flo closest focusing distance, which I believe is right there. I'll soon know. Okay, I'm going to move the camera in, keep an eye on the screen. Okay, and right where I'm going to nip there, let's lock, lock it in place. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Now, <clears throat> when I stop the, the lens down, you'll notice how the depth of field increases. Okay, we're now stopped right down as far as it will go. And uh, my cutter here, if, I, if I'm very careful and uh, where are the other ones? There they are. It's not very often I have three cameras all going at the same time. I think one time during my workshop I had four going. I think I used my iPad, camera and my iPad as well. I, I can't remember what I was doing that I thought I needed four cameras, but it, I did. And our cutter here. Now Let's try not to move anything. And I'm 
covering this up so it doesn't go pinging off. Where did it go? Is it stuck to my finger? No. And that, I tried. I tried to do it so that I wouldn't lose it, and and then I, I and then I lost it. Well, let's let's do another one. That that was funny. Okay. Check the screen. Yeah, it's in the right place. Okay, cover it up. Release. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Oh, I, I see it. I see it now. The first one. It, it was it was laying on top of the uh, on top of the photo etch sheet. And uh, okay, so we, we got two of them here. All right. Now let's uh, find a, a place to put them on, and um, so we can actually compare later. <laughs> this is fun, actually. I enjoy doing this. Okay, I think we'll just use two cameras now. We had our fun with three. All right. Now checking the monitor, you can see that it's needs to be focused here. Now this is, yeah, this is focused as close as it can go. Well, let's get it nice and sharp on the end of the spindle. Right on the very top of the spindle. Come on, go back up. Uh, I think that's about it. Okay, now the idea is when we turn it on, you know how I like to rotate stuff. My goodness, could I ever have a tiny little piece of pizza on that, couldn't I? Think of the calories, or maybe it would be calorie. <laughs> okay, um, now a few minutes ago I did know where these were. They're right there, and they've they're, they've got paint on them. So um, we're going to compare afterwards. I'll, I'll do a a side by side uh, shot. There. Let's see how that's going to look once it rotates. You know, I, I didn't stop my lens down here. Let's uh, let's just stop it down. Right now it's at f4.5. We'll stop it right down to oh, about f32. That'll increase the depth of field, but still maintain a fair amount of sharpness. Okay, now let's try not to move this thing. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. All right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, the super macro and put it on and get in as close as I can with this. And then we'll, we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two. Uh, maximum magnification on this with this one as it is right now. And maximum with this one. Um... I hope I'm not going to be uh, disappointed here. I mean, it's right now it's it's 12:57 already, <laughs> and I've done nothing on the uh, with plastic. <laughs> okay, uh, let's let's just uh, recompose here. I guess we can shut this off. We've we've already got the footage, so there we go. I may as well leave that off, it keeps falling off anyway. Oh, 
Okay, um, we'll crank this right down to as close as it will go. If I have it back like this, and I was to focus in on a subject, it would be two and a half, two and a half power. Whereas when I go like this, it's five. Now that that's not how you focus it. You still focus it the same way by moving it in or out, or moving this thing in or out, whatever the case might be. Uh, you know, I think that maybe the best thing to do, this is going to be very time consuming. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll turn it on here and the, the lens, we open it up manually like this. Right now it's at f2.8, but I think it's 2.8 when it's, when it's only at two and a half power. I don't think it's 2.8 at five power. Um, let's just get this going here. Well, some of you may have noticed that yes, I did turn the camera back on after I switched lenses, but I forgot to push record, and I thought I had. I thought I was recording all the footage with the Super Macro. I was recording nothing. I was just flapping my lips. Um, you know, as I'm sitting here in front of the computer right now, it is 1.36 in the afternoon. Um, I'm getting kind of tired, but you know what? I noticed that the streets are starting to dry up. Um, well, I guess you know what that means. Yeah, I guess, guess it means that we're going to have to do our super macro in the next episode. It means thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.